What's up guys, Jonah Mathis here. So this is the Govi Immersion RGBIC LED TV backlight. Big shout out to Govi for sponsoring this video and sending this out for me to test and review. While this is a sponsored video, all of my comments are my own thoughts and are in no way influenced by Govi. We're also gonna be giving away some of these LED backlight kits to you guys. So stick around to the end of the video to hear all about that. It's a fairly simple product with just a few main components. There's a 12 and a half foot long LED strip, control box, camera, and some foam blocks for calibrating the camera. So when you hear that at first, you might be a little confused wondering, well, why is there a camera? The 1080p camera uses something they call ColorSense camera technology, where it captures the various colors on the screen and sends them to the control box. Then the control box tells the LED strips what color to change to. And it does all of this extremely quickly. You're able to place the camera either on top or on the bottom of the TV. I'll be honest, I was a little skeptical at first because I didn't know how well this would actually work but it's been very impressive from my testing that I've done so far. Before I get too ahead of myself, let's talk about how to set this up. This specific kit is meant for TVs between 55 inches and 65 inches. Now you'll start off by using the alcohol prep pad to clean the backside of the TV where you plan on placing the LED strips. You do this to make sure the strips can securely stick to the back of the TV. I started on the back left side and worked my way around the TV clockwise. This is a 55 inch TV, so it was slightly difficult to fit the LED strip without anything hanging off the edge, but I managed to do it with just a little adjusting. Take your time when doing this. If you stick the strip on, but it's not quite straight or it's a little off, take it off and restick it. And since this TV isn't mounted on the wall, there's a little hump on the back where this stand attaches. But you should definitely be able to use this whether your TV is on a stand or mounted to a wall. Once you have all the LED strips installed, now it's time to test the controller piece to make sure everything looks right before we continue. It actually wouldn't be a bad idea to test the LED strip prior to sticking it to the TV. Once you have verified that everything looks good, you can attach the control box to the back of the TV where it can still connect to both the LED strip and the camera. And finally, you need to attach the camera to the very center top or bottom of your TV. Because this TV is on a stand and I'm using a soundbar, I placed it on top. I wish there was a secure way to attach the camera without using the super strong tape. If you have to readjust the camera at some point, it feels like it's just gonna rip the frame of the TV off. Also, it's good to note that if you have a super thin display, you may have to provide some support on the back of the TV for the camera to attach to. This is most likely an OLED display. Now with everything connected, you can press the power button on the controller piece to turn on the LED strip. The second button will cycle through various colors, and the third button will cycle through the different music modes or you can hold the third button and it will adjust the brightness level. But of course, that isn't the only way you can control this LED strip. Now we'll need to add it to the Govi app. This process was actually very simple, which was pretty surprising because I ran into issues with other smart LED products out there that were much more expensive than this one. In the app, tap add device, search for your model, create an account, connect it to Wi-Fi, yada, yada, yada. If you've set up any other smart home device before, this should be a breeze. Now the calibration part is where this setup differs from others. Now you'll need to stick the seven foam blocks in the indicated areas. Be careful not to press down too hard with them because the tape is very strong and you don't wanna damage your TV's display. So the camera will actually take a picture from its view and you have to drag the different points to match the foam blocks. Once the camera is calibrated, you can remove the seven blocks Again, be very careful when removing them because you don't want to damage your display. I wish they would use a much smaller piece of double-sided tape for these blocks because I was kind of scared when I was taking them off. And the last piece of this setup process is to bind the system with Amazon ALEXA or the Google Assistant. It literally takes like 15 seconds to do this and it's probably the easiest integration I've seen with ALEXA out of a smart home product. So now that everything is set up, let's go over the different modes that are available. Starting off, we have music mode. There are four different options here that will change the color according to the rhythm of the music. Energic, rhythm, spectrum, and rolling. And you can adjust how sensitive it is to sounds. Here's some quick demos for each mode.
Personally, I like rhythms set to the calm setting the most. But honestly, I'm not too big into listening to music. I'm more into watching movies, TV shows, and occasionally playing some video games. That goes right into the next mode, which is video. This is kind of the reason that we have the camera on top of the TV. There are two different modes here, one meant for movies and one meant for gaming. Then you can make it so that parts of the LED strip change or that the entire LED strip color changes depending on what's displayed to the TV. And these modes right here are where this lighting setup shines. Get it? It completely blew me away with how well it works. Yes, there's an ever so slight delay, but it really is not that noticeable when you're focused on the movie, TV show, or game. Now with it set to full, the LED strip is only a single color and changes depending on what the TV is displaying. It seems to change when it detects a lot of the same color and tends to jump around a lot. I can see a lot of people really liking this because the lights aren't too busy, but they still provide a very nice separation of background for the TV and active changing of colors. Then setting it to part makes the experience even better. As mentioned, part will change the colors of the edges based on the colors of the display. So here in Rocket League, you can see very clearly where it changes from red to blue and vice versa. You can also see this very well with movies. Here's Adobe Atmos test file called Escape. I use this a lot when I'm testing various soundbar systems. There's definitely a lot more going on with part than there is with full, but the way that the LED lights extend the display onto the wall is just absolutely amazing. I feel like it truly immerses you further into whatever you're watching or playing. Now for video games where you need to be really focused to perform well, I prefer full over part just because with part there really is a lot going on. It looks awesome and I love it, but for competitive games you probably don't want to be distracted too much with the LEDs changing colors. I couldn't find a technical explanation of the difference between game and movie settings, but from what I could tell, game made the lights change color quicker and more drastically, while movie made the lights blend together more and change less frequently. But honestly, I couldn't find much of a difference between the two. They both look and work extremely well. Very satisfied with the video mode altogether. The only thing I don't like is having a camera sitting on top of the TV, but the fact that this entire setup only costs $72, it's really not that big of a compromise. And of course, you aren't forced to use the music or video modes. You can also set the LED strip to a static color. The interface for this is actually very intuitive. You can change individual segments of the LED strip or you can make it so that it's all a single color. You're able to create very specific colors with a color wheel and save them for use at a later point. One thing I'd like to see from this app is the ability to create multiple presets and color mode. Like I wanna be able to make multiple specific layouts then with the tap of a single button, be able to cycle between them. I feel like this would be a very useful feature. Otherwise, if there are a few different setups that you like, you'll have to manually create them every single time. Not a huge deal because it's simple to work with, but could be a time saver for some people. And last of the super easy modes to use is the scene mode. With scene mode, it gives you 12 different already customized presets for colors and effects. Here's what they all look like and how they work. The voice commands to control this setup are pretty simple to use as well. Computer. Turn on TV LEDs. Computer, turn TV LEDs white. Computer, turn TV LEDs blue. You can't control quite everything with a voice assistant, but it's enough to make it very convenient to power on, change the brightness, change colors, etc. Now there is a DIY mode where you can create a style that has a single or multiple effects with various colors. It's nice that they gave this feature, but it's almost a little too complex for me. You could literally spend hours just messing with the different effects and settings to create some really unique styles tailored just for you. And if you need some inspiration, you can also save other people's DIY styles from the Govi Light Studio. You can use popular styles and see how they were created to further influence your own styles. It's a pretty interesting addition to the app. I'm a pretty simple man when it comes to lighting. I like to keep it just a plain color while the TV's not in use or on video mode when I'm watching or playing something. This has been an absolutely awesome addition to my office setup. I've looked at other products like this in the past, 
but none of them even come close to this price. The Philips Hue HDMI sync box is probably the most well-known alternative, but just the box alone is far more expensive than Govi's solution. And very few solutions have the ability to change the LED lights based on what's displayed to the TV. All right, so about this giveaway, Govi is gonna send out two of these kits to two of you guys. If you're interested in entering this giveaway, simply open your web browser and go to thehometheaterdiy.com slash govi dash giveaway. There will also be a link in the description. To enter, simply go to that page, enter your name and email, then follow Govi on either Instagram or Facebook. Those are the only requirements to enter. You can get additional entries by completing the other actions on that page. And with all that said, I hope you guys enjoyed this video. If you did, make sure you click that like button. If you didn't enjoy the video, click dislike and let me know what I can do better. If you aren't subscribed already, make sure you subscribe and I'll see you guys in the next one. Bye. Thank you.